Hello and welcome to MMA Crips Fighting Talk. On today's show, I'll be speaking with a sports psych, in Mr. David Mullins. David has dealt with mixed martial arts fighters throughout his career, so hopefully we can dig into that and just how important sports psych plays a part in mixed martial arts. Uh, with that, welcome to MMA Crips Fighting Talk, David. Thank you. Happy to be here. Now, first and foremost, David, uh, could you tell us how long you've been a sports psych for and what your actual work entails, please? Yeah, sure. Um, I've, um, I was doing my master's course in sports psychology and I was finishing up in 2009 and I had to do a, um, a placement as part of the course. So um, I wanted to work with a fighter. I've been a fan of, of boxing and MMA for years. So I wanted to work with a fighter because the... Uh, the, the mental side of fighting is, is fascinating. Um, so I got in touch with John Kavanagh in SPG in Dublin mm. and um, asked him if he would be interested in letting me work with one of his fighters. Um, and he was. He was very open to the idea. Um, so um, I started working with Ashling Daly in SPG and that was, uh, that was perfect because she was she's the, like the perfect person to work with, so open, honest, um, and uh, it went really well. So I've been I've been working with with that team since then. Um, I started working with more of the guys after that after that first uh, first few sessions with Ash. And then I've I work with a few other teams now as well. A few other guys from other teams. So um, it's been a good five years or so now since I've been just been working with fighters. Now I've been noticing like sports psychologists or sports psychs. They've- They've been in mixed martial arts for roughly about five years now. Um, obviously, it was GSP who first introduced this. Um, from your knowledge, just how long has uh, sports psychs played a part in mixed martial arts in like mental preparation for some fighters? For well, for as long as as there's been a sport, a combat sport, there's been people working on the mental side of their preparation. Um, whether it's the fighter themselves or the coach or a specific mental skills coach like myself, every fighter has always worked on their, on their mental game. Um, it's just a matter of, um, what I bring or what, what people like me bring is, is, is a more, uh, more focused, um, and a specific skill set that can, can work on that. Um, cause sometimes guys would leave things up to chance if they're working on their, on their mental game hoping that things are um hoping that things work out or leaving things up to chance too much um so this is this is much more of a of a of a routine of a, of a training exercise it's it's just another part of training basically that's how i see the the mental skills work and that's how all the fighters see it as well it's just another part of their training and well, you mentioned- that- sorry david go on I was just going to say as well i mean the idea of like with gsp working with with a guy or a few other high profile guys um, in the last few years, coming out and saying they work with guys like Chael Sonnen's done it, and a, a good few other guys have done it. It, it, it that does that does great for the sport, great for the development of of the skill set for at, for athletes, for fighters, because uh, it takes away that stigma that might have been there in the past. Of if you have to work with someone on your mental game, that means you're yeah. weak, um, which which has been there and maybe still is there to some degree, but it's. Um, it's much less, and and that's that's thanks to guys like GSP, Chelson, and Cerrone, and and some of the guys in SPG as well coming out and talking about how they work on their on their mental game. It's just another part of their training. Yeah, because I was going to ask, like, do you get much hesitation? Like, does somebody call you first and ask what it's all about over the phone or something before they actually come and meet you? You know, do a little bit hesitant. Do you find that with a lot of the fighters? Um, not so much hesitant, just more wondering what it's going to be they might have been referred to me by someone else some other fighter that they train with might have said you should maybe get in touch with david and see uh, that might you know, it might it might be good for you or like that's how, that's how it comes about mostly um or or else it's someone directly contacting me because they've they've heard about it um it's not it's not so much hesitation it's more not really knowing what it's going to involve and once they get to know just how practical the work i do is and um, then they're, they're they're very quickly at ease. But yeah, that first session um, or that first kind of contact can be a bit of a step into the unknown for a lot of guys and girls. But it's just a matter of uh, one of, of me getting them to realize just how practical how practical the work actually is. Now, 
Do you think in like, um, obviously you mentioned people like GSP and Chael Sonnen. Do you think in like maybe 50 years time that obviously a lot of the fighters, they go to the gym, they've got the workout bags there, they've got the coaches, they've got the grappling coaches, you know, they've got the striking coaches. Do you think like there could be a little office in the gym in pretty much every major gym for a sports psyche where all the fighters can actually go in after like, you know, after a training session, just go and, go and speak to the sports psych. You said 50 years? Yeah. I think that's more like more like two or three years. Yeah, th- that uh, soon? Yeah, like, I mean, the, um, the, 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 the gyms I work with, like, obviously, SBG is where I've done most of my stuff and a few other places as well. It's the, uh, the culture of MMA, but I think, it's, I think it's a lot to do with that. Because it's such a relatively new sport and um, there's constantly new techniques being, uh, being, being done in the cage, and new training regimes that fighters are more open to more, more open to things than maybe other traditional sports are. So they're, I think, I think the idea of working with the sports psych um, or working with on your mental game is, uh, is something that's, that's, that's very prevalent now in, 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 in lots of gyms, more than you would think, um, more than, more than the average person would think. Um, it, it, like when you think about what a fighter is doing, the the mental side of that is so huge, um, and uh, yeah, there's still a little stigma. There's still a few guys that think that's not for me, but in the most part, um, most gyms around the country would have some fighters that work with with somebody. Maybe not everyone in the gym does, but someone in each gym, or, or some like in lots of gyms, in the better gyms, uh, they tend to have some 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 other team working with a guy. You mentioned John Kavanagh. Obviously, I've listened to this guy. He's, um, he could be a sports psych himself, you know. <laughs> now, breaking into the straight blast gym, you know, it's like that's one of the major gyms in Ireland. They've, you know, it's the, the biggest gym in Ireland. Not to mention, it's you know, it's it's got a brand all over the world. You know, there's one in Manchester. There's um, there's one in Portland, Oregon, I believe. Uh, have you reached out and you know gone to these other straight blast gyms in Oregon in Manchester. Um, I haven't done any work with the guys in in the um, in in Manchester or, or Portland. No, um, I've done a few work, a few work, uh, a few sessions with the guys in Mjolnir. A few of the guys there um, in Iceland that uh, John has done some work with. But um, again, it's 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 um, it's just it's up to the fighter to to get in touch with me, kind of thing. I never, I don't want to. Um, Put myself out there too much I, it, for what it for what this is it's 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 better if the fighter fighter is interested the fighter approaches me that's how it's been for me so far um but guys are contacting me themselves and like you saying john could be a sports psych himself um yeah john is very aware of the importance of the mental side of 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 the of the of the, of the uh of the sport and he, he's one of he's one of the best coaches in the world um and SPG is one of the best gyms in the world. Do you sort of find you have more clients coming to see you coming off like a loss rather than a win? Um, I would say that's that. There's there's no real trend there. It's 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 a mix. Um, yeah, sometimes there is a guy who's obviously coming off the back of a loss and they feel like they need to change things up. But sometimes there's a guy off the back of a win who feels like he didn't perform as well as he could, or there's some issue that's there, and that's that's a that's a good place to be is where you you've just got to win but you still want to improve that's that's a, that's a good place but yeah there's i wouldn't say there's a there's a real trend between whether guys have just won their last fight or lost their last fight it's a nice mix just pretend that i'm a, a fighter now one of your clients so i'll <laughs> come to you um how would you treat me differently coming off a win than a loss it doesn't work like that um, no. it's about getting it, it's not like there's a program for a guy who's just won and there's a program for a guy who's just lost yeah it depends on the individual um so i need to get to know you if you're a fighter i need to get to know you get to know your core values um get to know what what makes you tick what motivates you who you are what what else is going on in your life and and then find out what's the best way of getting the best performance out of you um so the the win come, coming off the back of a win or coming off the back of a loss shouldn't really change the the approach to the next fight because it is an independent event. Yeah. There's no such thing as a streak. I'm I'm a big believer in that. There's no such thing as a streak. 
Hinnom Barrow might be on a streak of wins now, people keep saying that, but he's not. He's won individual fight after individual fight. Each event is separate to the last. So all you can do is take lessons from the last one, win or lose, and, and move forward, but, but treat each one as an individual event. Now, you mentioned Asling Daly. Obviously, she's trying out for the Ultimate Fighter 20. Now, this is a real strange... It's a strange place to be because you're, you're in a house full of, like, people you're going to be fighting, you know, you're, you're away from your friends, your family, your gym, your routine. Now, what sort of advice would you give her? Because that, that's really important because that's going to be like a, a real test. You know, if she came to you, what sort of advice would you give her right now if she came to you? Well, I, w- I wouldn't want to go into specifics on working with someone I work with on air like this. So I'm not going to, yeah. I'm not going to go into specifics of what I do. I just, yeah, there is obviously unique challenges with, with going on to the ultimate fighter house. Yeah. Um, which, you can identify uh, which ones are controllable, which ones are uncontrollable, um, and finding a way of managing all the uh, all the potential issues that are there, and coming up with a a plan for each each thing, and how you want to be within the within the setting, who you're going to be. Um, so yeah, but it's it's it, I, I couldn't go into specifics on a on a on a particular individual. That wouldn't be fair. Now, to any athletes that might be listening to this show now, um, you know, they might be a little bit hesitant about meeting you. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say to them, David? Um, the the idea to me of not working on your mental game, um, if, there, if it's something that you can be improved on, which it can, everything can be improved on. You work on your jiu-jitsu game, you work on your wrestling, your stand-up, your conditioning. Um, so you, the mental side of things should just be another thing you work on. Too often guys have left things up to chance, um, hoping that they're on a good night come fight time or hoping that they show up. Or or also too many times people focus on the uncontrollable stuff, the win, the the rankings, the belt, the crowd, all that stuff, instead of focusing on the the controllable side of things, which is basically your preparation and your performance then on the night. Well, to any athletes or fighters that might be listening to the show right now who want to make an appointment with you, David, uh, what would be the best way to contact you and arrange an appointment? Um, the best thing they could do is to... to um, you can find me on Twitter at ConquerMMA. At ConquerMMA. And that's probably the best place to uh, to get me. Um but what I always find is if, if if guys want to work with me, they they they'll they'll find a way to 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 get in touch. Um, it, I'm I'm on Facebook, email, phone, Twitter, WhatsApp. There's always a way to find someone. So, um, but yeah, I, I think at Conquer MMA is probably the easiest way to do it. Is there anything that I didn't cover with you today that you would like to say to our listeners right now? Um. I just, yeah, well, just a, probably on that stigma thing, I, you've already mentioned it, but just to reinforce that message of yeah. the idea of, of working with someone on your mental game as being a weakness or it's only for only for, for, um, for certain people or the, also the idea of it being like hypnosis and you're going you're gonna to train someone to become, uh, not, that they don't feel pain or all these kind of myths that are out there. Um, just to realize that everyone can improve on their mental game, whether you're, you're, you you see yourself as being mentally tough or, 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 or whatever way you see yourself, you can always improve. It's the same as any aspect of your training, something that you can be improved on. And it is something within your control. And there is actual practical techniques that can help you, um, to, to, to perform better come fight night or prepare better as well, get more out of your training. It's not just about fight nights, about getting the best out of your training as well. Um, so those myths that are out there and those stigmas that are out there, um, just to just to realize that there are lots and lots of guys, lots and lots of girls that are that are working on their mental game. So it is it is something that um, I would encourage fighters to do. It's not necessarily to work with me, but just something that you take take more ownership of your of how your mental mental preparation is going, rather than leaving things up to chance. Okay, David, thank you for joining me today. It's been really interesting. Very welcome. I've enjoyed it as well. Okay, from MMA Crips Fighting Talk, thank you for watching.